Hey, Rudy, here's Carrie. All right. Hello, Rudy. Hello, Carrie. Thank you very much for having me. Well, thank you, Rudy, for calling in and joining us. It's a real honor to have you. Oh, well, <laughs> thank you very much. You're too kind. Well, this will be a really interesting uh, conversation. We're going to do two 11-minute segments with you. Okay. I'll listen to you briefly and then let you share share your background and your idea between uh, faith and the art connection. It goes pretty quick, so you'll want to jump into that pretty quickly on some of your history. And I'll just ask you some questions. We'll take a break at one point, and we'll jump right back in, but I'll let you know when that break is coming, okay? That's wonderful. Okay. Uh, as is my practice with every show, I like to pray before we get started. Is that okay with you? Sure, that's fine. Great. Let me put my headset on and then we'll get started here with prayer. Thank you. All right. Can you I my head? I can't hear in there. Okay. Yes. Rudy, can you hear me? Yes, I do. opportunity. I just pray a blessing on Rudy. Thank you for his work and his insight. Just ask that you would help this conversation be encouraging to people to really appreciate your handiwork all over creation. We ask that in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. All right. All right. Whoops. Yeah, I'm going to be able to. Rudy, we're kind of having a little bit of a moment here because I left my glasses <laughs> somewhere else. So... I'm going to be holding my notes for distance. <laughs> yeah, I'll, uh, we can do it, Rudy. No problem. Don't worry about it. <laughs> that's all right. That's all right. I've been there. Oh, thank you. Okay, well, here we go. It's time for Relationship Insights with Carrie Abbott, a show with life-giving conversations that matter. And now, your host... Oh, so good to be with you. I hope you're having another fantastic day. Every day is an opportunity not only to experience life, but to see God in and around us. In so many places, we know that God cannot be contained. But you know, the Bible tells us that creation itself speaks very loudly that God is real. And I, for one, and we've talked about this before, am a real fan of artwork. I love looking at beautiful things. I love seeing mountains. We live in a beautiful area here. And I do believe that many people who are yet to really have a personal relationship with God himself sense, even when they're out in creation, there's something different about that. And I ran across an article and some work done by Rudolf Brun. He goes by Rudy. He's the author of Science, Art, and Christianity, Contribution to a Theology of Nature for Our Time. And this particular release that I was looking at, which is making the case that when we look at creation and artwork, is it possible that we can understand God in that? And I thought it would be really intriguing for us to have Rudolf Brun join us, and you are in for a treat because he's actually on the phone calling from Switzerland, and I'm going to let him give us a little bit of his background. First of all, Rudy, it's great to have you. Well, thank you for having me. It's really wonderful. And you know, one thing that your listeners and yourself will we have to cope with is my Swiss accent. <laughs> so my musculature learned the Swiss way, and so I will be sorry that I cannot really avoid this kind of thing. So I might get some color from that one already. Well, I love the accent, <laughs> and I do appreciate your background. By the way, I want our listeners to know you've received, you have a PhD from the University of Basel, Switzerland. That is right. You are pressed by at the University of Geneva, also at Indiana State University and Texas Christian University. So you've had a lot of unique opportunities, haven't you? Yes, I, I really did have. And the most fantastic opportunity was to get to America. That was really the most wonderful time that I had. And the people were so wel welcoming and friendly. And, you know, I mean, it was just a terrific experience. Glad to hear that. That's, it's always great to get a good report. Well, let's talk a little bit about the idea that beauty in a painting might even be a way to see God or understand God better. Yeah, well, if, if I may, I would like to, if you don't mind, uh, put a little uh, foundation on what I would like to say, if you don't mind. Um, you see, uh, <clears throat> 
I'm, I, I'm, a, I'm, I'm a scientist, okay? And when I was becoming a scientist in Basel, Switzerland, with my thesis and whatnot, I also had an opportunity to get to know a theologian very well. His name is Hans Urs von Balthasar, and he's actually quite, a, he's actually quite an important figure, probably a little bit less known in the United States, uh, but in, in Europe, and so he really has a very big name. And I was uh, very, very fortunate enough to kind of not only become a biologist, uh, but also got some sort of a sense for Christian philosophy and theology through Balthasar, you see? So when I then grow pro grew professionally, uh, of course I had to become a biologist first, but then it was always in my mind the, the theology that I had had a little insight uh, through Dr. Balthazar. And uh, when the opportunity came around at TCU to teach a class on religion and science, uh, that gave me the opportunity to kind of try to integrate if at all possible, to integrate what I had learned as a biologist with what I have learned from Balthasar theology. Right? <clears throat> and if, I allow, if you allow me to continue, the bottom line here is that when you ask, what is the center of Christianity? What, what is really the fundamental revelation of Christianity? What is it in a nutshell? And I think it is, we can say that in a nutshell, Christianity proclaims that God is love, right? That's really something that also the Holy Father kind of formulated in an encyclica on this, which has the title Deus Caritas S, Benedict, Father Benedict, Pope Benedict, that kind of wrote that thesis or that, uh, that encyclical. So this is, this is the foundation from Christianity. God is love. Now the foundation from science is, and I'm a scientist, and the foundation from science is nature is capable of constructing itself. Right? That, is, that is the foundation or that is the, 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 the anchor point uh, for, that we have learned from science. And so if you take those two anchor points seriously, namely God is love on one side, and on the other side, nature is capable of constructing itself, then the question becomes, can we illuminate this kind of situation from Christianity a little bit? What, 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 what would be a Christian interpretation that nature is capable of constructing itself? So, when, 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 when we ask Christianity, how, where does creation come from? Then there is no doubt that creation comes from God. And more precisely, God speaks and creation becomes. We learn that in Genesis, you know, it's clear God, God kind of speaks and creation becomes. So creation is created through the word of God. That is no other way to, to, to kind of bounce around that. This, this is firm foundation what we learn from Christianity. So, what do we do with God is love? Well, when God, if God is love, and he is, then creation has to be God's gift, right? This, this, is, this is the basic connection that I would like to talk about if you allow me to do that. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, and you obviously have, because we have limited time, we can't go into the full scope of your studies, which I know have been very vast. When I was watching some uh, YouTube videos of you, Rudy, explaining some things, it was very intriguing. I encourage people to always do that. But in this case, you have made the connection between the creation, God is love, and science, and You've said art is closer to God than you than you usually hear in church. What do you mean by that? Well, that is actually a citation that uh, is not from me, but I, I fully agree with that citation. Sure. And if you are asking me, what then is the relationship between faith and art? Right. I think the the, the, the foundation for an answer to that I I, I tried to uh, lay already. The 
if, if, if the word of God creates creation, the word of God is everywhere in creation. See, if it, it might be a babel, it might be a bug, it might be stars, it might be galaxies. If, if, if God creates creation, and then the word of God is in all of creation, in everything. But it is in creation as creation. Not as God again, right? This is a little bit difficult to right, kind of right. make that, that, that thing. See, God gives his word away to creation so that creation becomes capable of, cre of creating itself. And so the word of God then is everywhere in, the, in creation. And you see the old philosophers already talked about the transcendentals. You know, God is true. God is good. And God is beautiful. And this is now the connection that I would like to make. And that is that if, 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 if the word of God creates creation, then the word of God is God, right? It is God in the total otherness of creation. But the word of God still is God and therefore as God beautiful. So the beauty that we see in nature is a window into the beauty of God. It is, of course, a, a, a beauty that we have to learn to see a little bit, but the, the beauty is everywhere in nature. Why? Because it is the word of God that created creation. And so if we want to talk about... Let me see if I can wrap this up. Let me see, Rudy, if I can make sense of this for myself and for our listener. This is intriguing. and Philosophically, you're, you're thinking very deep which I really appreciate, and I want to bring it back just a little bit because I have this sense uh, some of our listeners might be saying exactly what's the point here. So if you're saying that, the, that God spoke all of creation into being, and yet and that word is still active and alive, it's not just active. We know the word of God itself is active when we read the Bible, but you're saying you can go into creation and sense that God is still speaking through his creation, that that is not a one-time experience, that that is continual which may be why we're so drawn to creation, why we're so drawn to nature, why we're so drawn to those things. Is that what you're saying? Yes, I think that's very nicely formulated. That's, that is very nicely formulated indeed. You see, yeah, 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 I agree. Okay, and so in that case then, and this is where the exciting part comes for me, because I mean, you're not the first philosopher that I've seen say this. I mean, you can go back in time to the founding fathers of the church, and they were trying to express that same thing, and not just creation as in a mountain, but even creation is as in the form of a human being, because we are part of the creation. And if we actually pay attention to the dignity of the picture of a person on display, we are seeing, we are seeing God's word alive and active in the sense that that person is made in his image. And that's why there is life when we really dignify God's creation and not just either don't steward it as in nature or don't don't bring responsibility and love and dignity to the human person. Does that make sense? That makes total sense. Yes, sure, sure. I'm, we're, we're on the same page. <laughs> oh, that's so great. Well, I am a, a huge fan of artwork. If you don't mind me shifting just a little bit before we take a break here, when, when somebody creates a painting and they're trying to really create another image of nature itself or of the creation itself, it, depending on the person and the artwork, it, in itself it has power. It's not God's spoken word, of course, but it still represents that very thing. Is that part of what you talk about in your book, the, your science, art, and Christianity? Well, what I'm trying to get at is that we human beings are rooted in creation. That is, we, we, we are rooted in the same center that created everything in the universe, right? The difference with us is that we can meditate, we can discover, we can discover this word of God that creates everything creates therefore also us. We can discover this word of God deep in ourselves. You see, uh, that, is, that, is, that, that is the difference between human beings and all the rest of creation. We are very fortunate that we inside of us, we have this, uh, we have this voice, we have this knowledge that St. Augustine so beautifully uh, kind of put, put in the words, you know, uh, that God is, God is 
in more inside of us than myself. See, and 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 now if we start creating and we do, we are able to create because nature made our brain. See, we 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 can think about nature, we can discover nature, we can understand nature because our brain has be, has has been formed by nature, and we, we, the same way it has formed everything else except that we can discover this word of God that created everything in ourselves. And if we start to create art, we might be able to bring some of that out. We can bring some of that out in music, we can some of that bring dance, we can bring some of that out in, in, in paintings maybe. But of course one has to discriminate because, because religious art and the rest and the rest is good also, but the religious art is what, what, what probably is what we want to talk about. Okay, terrific. Listen, we need to take a break. We are talking to a very special guest, Rudolf Brun, calling us from Switzerland. Yes, we bring you only the finest. And, you know, I wanted this conversation because I was intrigued by the concept that I saw in some of your work, Rudy, and I really appreciate you taking the time. We're going to take a break. When we come back, we're going to talk about this further. Thank you. All right, you're you're doing great. We're going to jump right back in. And should we, let's talk about religious art then. Yes. Okay. And your, your producer just got back from Hawaii. Right. You ready to say something, Mark? Okay. Yeah. You know, I, this is a really fun show today because we have a special guest. This is a unique conversation we're having with Rudolf Brun. He is has a PhD from the University of Basel, Switzerland. He's been a professor in biology at the University of Geneva. He is a scientist. He has also been at Indiana State University and Texas Christian University. His interdisciplinary work included designing and co-teaching the course Religion and Science. And so I think it's helpful for us to hear differing views as we want to have not only civil conversation, but we want to really enlighten one another on certain topics. And art and science and Christianity, you don't always hear all of those going together. And Rudy, you were so helpful in explaining your view of what you believe that God spoke all things into being and that creation really tells the story of God, which is God is love. And I agree with you on that, Rudy. I think that all of creation has his fingerprints on it. And, of course, the human person is made with an actual essence linked to his likeness, unlike any other part of the creation. And it, interestingly, Rudy, when you look at Scripture, and I know you have, it, we are to become love. That is our telos. That is our end. That is the function we're supposed to practice now and take into eternity but why do you think art is such an important part of that? Well, art goes directly into our hearts, into our souls, you know, through our senses. And if, you know, I was in Russia, for example, and I have heard those choirs in Russia. I'm not saying there are not good Russia, enough good choirs in the U.S. They are, for heaven's sake, they are. But that particular experience that I, uh, I had with five male singers dressed in black, you know, singing these Russian hymns, <laughs> you know, if, if you want to experience transcendence, that's what I'm talking about. I mean, this thing goes right into your soul and goes right into your middle. You know, it is elevating, you know, it, it, it kind of brings the transcendent beauty of God, brings it down to earth and right back into our hearts. And so this religious art then that I'm talking about is an art that kind of elevates us, you know, elevates us going up, to go our way, which is exactly the way you have formulated, namely trying to go the way of love, which, by the way, is not that fast, it's not that easy. <laughs> no, no, it's not that easy. And I, I, I was saying that I wish we could see you saying this because I've seen you on video and you have... You, I can see you being illuminated by the idea of even that concert you were talking about. And it's true. For those who enjoy the symphony or going to hear any kind of music that's elevating and positive, and to see it on display is so different than just a regular conversation about a song. Hearing the song, watching the musician come alive in their gifting and talent, it does, it does improve the soul. There's no question. And I would say this. There are a lot of pre-Christians, a lot of people who are in a faith journey trying to figure out 
what is what is this God thing about, and is God good? They will very pleasantly attend almost any form of art. Um, they'll go to art shows. They'll watch. They'll watch concerts. They'll take in the symphony. They'll go, you know, in the park, and 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 you see this all over the the state of Washington. In fact, in the summer, a lot of outdoor concerts. But and and they are so that's their connection. They don't take it the next step further, which is the God of this artwork is the God of all creation, and He's a good God, and He created you too. And that's one of the reasons I was intrigued by your work because there are a lot of people who have been brought up to believe that science is the answer. I believe that science reveals truth, and I believe God is truth. Do you address that issue in your book, Science, Art, and Christianity? Well, in Science, Art, and Christianity, I uh, bring example from uh, music history uh, to kind of illustrate that uh, the, the creativity of musicians and the creativity of any artist, as a matter of fact, is somehow related to the creativity of nature. You see, I'm trying to make uh, make the connection because, be, between the creativity of nature and our creativity by basically right. stating uh, that our creativity is a, continu a continuity of the creativity of nature. And if you analyze that what, that, what this really means to say, then I think examples from music uh, are probably the best ones that I can think of right now. Uh, because in music, you basically have the structure of creation. You see, uh, a creation is capable of creating itself by synthesizing step by step from what it synthesized already into novelty. And that is exactly what happens in music also. You, you have the synthesis of sound, and then you have the synthesis of a melody, and then you have the synthesis of the first movement of a symphony, and then you have the synthesis of the entire symphony. You see, this, this whole structure, this whole ontological structure of music is resembling, I wouldn't say identical, but it is very, very close to the way creation creates. Eh? So music, music brings music brings to closer to creation not only by listening in but by philosophically analyzing in how, how this music really happens. So this is interesting. Growing up in the churches, I have I would say when I talk about creation, I always include and insert God. I would say God is the God of the creation of music because of his gifts that he's given us. But you're saying there's a connection to the way that he ordered creation, that he spoke it into being, that creation itself has the ability. You're using the term nature, where some might say, well, God created all things, so anything that creates out of that comes from God. Is that ultimately what you're saying? I know you're, you're, you're linking it together in a way that's unique. Well, um, that's a little bit, um, that is certainly right, but there is, a, there is an essential crux, there is an essential logic problem, you know, in, 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 in what I'm trying to say. And that, that, that crux is that for our logic, for our logic, something cannot be that which it is not, right? I mean, it, 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 it's, it's illogical to think that something can be that which is really not, which, which it is really not. E either it is or it is not, but it cannot be that which it is not. That's not true for God, you see? God's logic, if I want to express that this way, you know, is a little bit different. Right? God is capable of being God in that which is not God. And you might say, yeah, well, in the, how in the world is that? But, you know, in the Christmas event, we have exactly that. In the Christmas event, God becomes a human being. Namely, God becomes that, which certainly is not God, namely a human being. Yet, God is capable of doing this, right? This, this is the anchor point. This is the anchor point of Christianity, as I see it. But it is also the anchor point of what I'm trying to say. You see, the word of God is God. Of course it is God. But the word of God has the capability of becoming that which is not God, namely creation. This is an illogicality, you know, but 
you have, I have to stick with that. I cannot avoid, I cannot avoid this illogicality. It needs to be at the center. I love it. Well, listen, Rudy, I'm afraid our time has come to a close. We've just had our first conversation with you, and it's been really quite a joy. You have intrigued us, I know. I am definitely going to follow some of your work and try to understand it even better. But I so appreciate you taking the time, calling from Switzerland, to share this insight with us. And for those of you who are interested, it's Rudolf Brun, author of Science, Art, and Christianity, Contribution to a Theology of Nature for Our Time. I think it's important that we investigate as broad as we can what God is doing at work in the world. And Rudy, I have to tell you, you have been a joy to have on this show. Thank you so much for taking your time with us today. Well, thank you, Kerry. I think I have a very, very great new friend in you. You, you formulated the Aww. things right out of my heart. I mean, you really did. And I thank you for that. And I thank all the listeners who had to cope with this accent of Switzerland. So eat some Swiss cheese and buy some chocolate and forgive me. Okay. <laughs> oh, you are so sweet. Well, it's a joy to meet you, Rudy, and look forward to connecting again one day. And, and we love your accent. So thank you very much, Kerry. Okay. Well, thank you for having me. I deeply enjoyed it. Thank you very much. Welcome, everyone else. We'll see you next time. Okay, Rudy. Great job. Thank you. It was great talking to you. It really, really was. I appreciate it very, very much that some other person kind of gets it. That's, you know, that's, it's very rare. It's very rare, Carrie. Yeah, it's very well, rare. Yeah. Well, I am very humbled by your compliments and appreciate your efforts to help us understand really important important views of God that are bigger than what we usually do. So thank you so much. And God bless you, Rudy. And God, I mean that. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank okay. you. Have a good very, so, very good. Thank you very much. Right. So goodbye. Bye-bye. Yeah. Oh, wow.